five, four, three, uh, hold on one second. Sorry. Five, four, three, two, one. Hello and welcome to this edition of Pop and Scott Talk Baseball. Getting ever so closer to the Midsummer Classic. Uh, I know they are like in their final round of however they do it now with the All Star picks. Uh, well, they had the teams come out the other day. I thought okay, then they're finally done. I know it was. It. it I don't like the way they do the All Star. I'm, I'm kind of done with the all-star so it's hard for me to get into it i know i saw read an article where there was some new players in it this year uh have you seen any uh, did you look at the roster when you looked uh, at it but i saw it the other day i didn't i didn't make copy it's a popularity of contest not who's the better players you know i i mean in the in in the uh in the american league it was probably the, the american league lineup to me, is more representative of the better players. Nationally, you got like Profar's in the outfield and stuff, and I, you know, it's just uh, well, he's having a good season. He's having a great season, but I mean, I, you know, who knows? I, right. I don't pay as much attention to it as I used to. It does it's not as important to me as it used to be. Right, right. That's they, they. I don't know. They took the for and us the older guys, uniforms I ever saw. Yeah, the older us older people that remember the. You know the at the classic. I mean, you got to see it in the golden era. I got to see it in the, I you know seventies and eighties with all the players I love. And I, I think as a kid too, looking at it, we're looking at it as a kid's eyes, where it's a little bit more heroes. Our heroes are standing of there. Yeah, of course. Now, now we're old guys, and it's just like yeah. <laughs> and they took away the uniforms, like you said, and you know, and and now it's it's for fun. And I don't, I'm not against anybody that watches the little, you know, that watches it or anything. I'm not big in the home run contest or any of that. Well, in the home run derby, uh, Judge and Otani aren't, aren't participating. So you have your two best home run hitters for either league, and neither one of them are participating. Right. Yeah. That's, did, uh, I like how Gunner announced he was going to be in it while he was doing live at shortstop during the Orioles game. Thought that was interesting. I got to see that game, and I figured out one way to watch Mets and Nationals when I have the chance is uh, that I wanted to really see the Woods kid play for the Nationals. His first game was against the Mets, and of course, it's blacked out except for on ESPN. Plus, it was the Deportes game of the night, so it was in Spanish, and that is no blackout. So I get to watch it. I just turned the volume off like I always do. I don't really need volume one. And I uh, had it on in. So I get to see the Woods kid play for the Nationals. That is a big dude. I didn't realize how big he is. He's 6'7". Yes, he is big. I, I don't know. They kept showing his dad. He was not that big. But I think his grandfather or somebody was saying he was a big man. Uh, but I thought it was awesome. The crowd gave him a stand ovation. The umpire kind of. Wiped the plate, took his time. Yeah, he, he t- did this so he could get his. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Alvarez said, "Welcome to the big leagues," to him, and uh, so I thought that was really nice. And then he, he gets a hit. hit. He got yeah. a base hit his first time up. Yeah. So and then the next night he gets a stolen base, and I did he score the game winning run, or it ended up being a game winning run. Um, yeah. So he hit a home run yesterday. Yeah, and I, the Nationals are building a great core it, it and they said there's more in the pipeline uh that night mckenzie gore pitched awesome he had a great game uh against the mets and you know i, I they could just stay on track they're yeah, he had they're a rough game out. yesterday he, they won but he had a rough game mckenzie gore yeah well, I, those are the ones you know you have a rough day and you win that's that's a good that's a that's a team. Well, the night before, I saw one of the maybe one of the best baseball games I've seen in the last 10 years was um, the Mets and the uh, Nationals uh, on the 4th of July. Uh, yeah. Lasted about two hours and five minutes, something like that. Um, 
uh, I think it was Quintana was pitching for the Mets, and he pitched four, seven innings, four hits, no runs, and he was pitching against, uh, I think it's Irving or whatever the kid's name is for. I, I got it written down here somewhere. Jacob Irvin. He hit. He he allowed one hit in eight innings. The Mets hit into five double plays. The Nationals hit into two. So uh, the uh, Mets brought in a reliever, and uh, one of the uh, Winkler came off the bench, bench hit, and hit a home run. They won one to nothing. Gr fantastic game. Great defense by both teams and everything. Then the other night, the Nationals hit into two more double plays. One uh, with the bases loaded. And one out. And they're in extra innings. I'm going, come on, guys. You can win the game. You've already hit the two double plays. One with the bases loaded. Runners on first and third. One out. I'm going, you, you put a pinch runner in at third. It can fly. Suicide right. squeeze. Suicide bunt and suicide squeeze. If he's out, he's out because you're going to hit into a double play. So they didn't do that. Guess what they did? They didn't do a double play. Yeah. And they lost the game uh, to the Cardinals. And I'm going, you know, if it doesn't work, so what? What right. you're doing's not working. Hitting into double plays every other game is not working. Right. And, um, but I mean, I that just see the kid that kid Skeens pitch live against the Mets the other day. That that was pretty good. Threw seven innings. Uh, so he was humming, but he he's not throwing hard every pitch. He's he's starting to know. Well, no, and, and he's also got a change up and a and a breaking pitch, and yeah. both of them are good too. Yeah, well, the Mets were letting those go and sitting on a fastball. Believe it or not, that's kind of what they're. He had to get those for strikes, and he'd started two later in the game, but McNeil hit one, a rocket. You know, he's throwing 100, and you're coming through as fast as you are, and he hit crush one. So it, that was – I just liked seeing him pitch, and I was glad to see him go seven innings. Well, and in Pittsburgh, um, they, 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 uh, they're they one of those teams that they can't, they can't catch a break. That other really good rookie pitcher they've got, Jared Jones, I was talking about him last week. He's going on the 15-day uh, disabled list. He's got a lat strain. So they lost him for 15 days. So, uh, but that's – and then Minnesota had an injury the other day that ain't good, and that's uh, Royce Lewis. Uh, well, this is the second time he's gotten hurt, or at least this year. Well, he gets hurt every year. Yeah. He and Buxton are always hurt. Buxton this year, I don't think Buxton's been on the IR. But, yeah. but this is the second time for Lewis. And um, he's got a lat strain. So all of a sudden, lat strains are the big deal. Um, so he's out. And, I don't even uh, think I have a lat, so we're good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah if I had a lat, it's last. I can tell you that. <laughs> In my days of lats are long gone. I, I, <laughs> my old lats are no good anymore. Uh, this is pretty kind of – Christian Walker. Uh, of uh, of uh, the Arizona Diamondbacks. Yeah, Gold um, Glover. Yeah, against the L.A. Dodgers. In three games, he's hit five home runs. So if he played the Dodgers every day, he'd hit 342 home runs a year. <laughs> so, uh, this guy, I mean, they can't get him out. They've tried. They were they were talking about it on MLB the other day that, that they tried breaking pitches. Fastballs, change-ups, he's hitting everything, hitting it all fields, center field, left field, right field. He's just he's just got their number. Um, that was incredible. Here's one that I really think is incredible, and that's for the Minnesota Twins. Jose Miranda has 12 straight hits. Yeah, 12 set a record. And 12 straight hits. 72 years ago. A gentleman named Walt Dropo of the Detroit Tigers, because I remember him when I was a kid. Uh, Walt Dropo, he was an outfielder for the Tigers. He did it. And then uh, there was a couple of guys in the 30s that did it. But Walt Dropo was the last time one that did that. And then now Miranda's got that. Uh, yesterday, the, that young kid, Ben Rice, for the Yankees, he hit three home runs against Boston. Yeah. Um, and, and he's playing because of Rizzo getting hurt. 
Yeah, and and Shohei Otani is not. Uh, he uh, he has a chance, an outside chance to get the triple crown in the National League this year. Right. And I didn't realize it, but in the National League, uh, the last time that anybody won the triple crown in the National League was 1937. <laughs> so that was a long time ago. I mean, it's happened in the American League since then, but not in the National League. Yeah, Miguel Cabrera. Yeah, M- Miguel Cabrera. I remember when Reed Stremski did it. Yeah. For Boston. Um, and here's my, here's my beef with the fundamentals. I mean, just – it's funny how certain things happen in, in these weeks, and it seems like it's an epidemic. Pitchers throwing to second base, either for a force play or double play or a pickoff, turning and throwing to second base. About six throws this week was going into center field. It's like an ep- they can't throw the ball to the bag. They're throwing it wide, high, down, up, up, and people are moving up because of it. So all of a sudden, I mean, they made mention it on MLB this morning. Somebody ought to try to um, – they ought to start practicing this again because evidently they're not practicing it enough. In yeah, training. well, a lot of times the pitcher's throwing it to, to nobody and hoping somebody's going to be there when they throw yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, at least throw it to the bag. Right. If you're throwing it 15 feet in the air or behind the shortstop coming to the bag, that's yeah. not doing you any good. Yeah, because the Mets actually – Picked off Reynolds last night or yesterday. It's a good play. But I mean, I just thought I'd mention that because it seems yeah. like it's that it's a, it's an epidemic when it when it happens one time, it seems like it happens ten more times. And your boy Buckner, uh, the the umpire, you you mentioned him last week. Well, I got to see a game. He wasn't behind the plate. He was at first base. He called a guy out at first base. And I'm sitting there watching the game in real time with my old 78-year-old eyeballs. He was I, he was safe, and he called him out. Naturally, they reviewed it. Scott, it was, it was a, almost a full stride. That's how much it was. And he didn't see that? I mean, you know, here, here, we, here we go. We got to have somebody, I guess. Angel's gone. So now we got CB Hernandez or Angel Buckner, we, one or the other. <laughs> we we got because it's just. Well, the guy behind the plate for the Mets Pirates game yesterday was pretty bad. He cost yeah. the Pirates at least one run with bases loaded uh, late in the game. So, but it worked for the Mets. So I thought he was a great umpire. Yeah, but it was. Uh, <laughs> I know that I, I mentioned that because um, you mentioned Buckner last week, and I know he's one of the worst umpires behind the plate. But that that call at first base wasn't even close, and he missed it. Um, the um, other thing on MLB, they were talking about running out of the baseline. There were two or three calls in the last month where someone was called out for running out of the baseline when it, you're allowed to three feet. It's nowhere near the three feet. The, right. And they showed the one, they showed one um, with Bellinger. Now to me, he'd have been out because he did go out from shortstop. I almost behind third base and came back up the line. I probably called him out, but they had one on the first baseline where the guy never left the two lines. He stepped on the line, and the umpire called him out out of out of for running out of, of the baseline. Oh, here here we go. Brian Kenny and his talking heads. They're going well. You know what? They'd rather do this. They think this looks cool. That's why they're doing that. That's why they're making the call. People, you're paid to do a job. Do your homework. The reason the umpires are calling people out for running out of the baseline this year is because they're making up for last year. You see, last year, I saw three instances where the base runner caught a cab, went to 34th Street, got on a bus, and came back to first base. He was called safe. Guy coming from short from second to third dug a hole, came up out of the hole, and came on third base. He was called safe. 
These guys were running, I mean, 35, 40 feet away from right. the bag and coming back to the bag and they were being called safe. So right. everybody was screaming about this last year. So when you're when this is brought to the attention of the umpires or any officials in any sport, then they overcompensate. Because they don't want to be, oh, they were criticizing us last year. I don't want to be criticized this year. Well, I'm sure when they go to pre, when they do the uh they go to summer or uh, spring training as well. That's cool. They gotta go to that and they probably show those videos. So that's on their minds. It, exactly. That's what I'm that. saying. So yeah. it wasn't because they wanted to do this, it was because they were overcompensating for last year, but they never said that because they didn't do their homework. Or they couldn't remember last year, one or the other. And I thought I was the only one that did that. But, I mean, I, I just had to bring that up because I, sometimes these people, they talk about stuff. Oh, and then Colin Cowherd the other day. Oh, the batting averages in baseball are just – Oh, the batting average in baseball is average 232. There's only 23 players hitting over 300. I don't even think it's that many. I think it's 12 or 13 of 300. This is terrible. So what we have to do is lower the mound again, because everybody's throwing a hundred. Lower the mound again. Well, you know, if you keep lowering the mound, the guys will be pitching off flat ground like they did when they first took them. A softball game. So we can go back to 1861. You know, I mean, because they started playing it just before the Civil War in 1858 or something. Here's what you do: you want to solve that problem. First of all, the players don't want to solve it because they want to go up there and swing from their heels. Swing for the home run every time. But if you really want to solve the problem, teach them how to hit. Juan Soto, just a rookie, just a kid with the Nationals, his first year, and he's striking out some. His second year, he get two strikes. He widened his stamp, choked up on the bat about a half an inch, brought his hands from here to here, and didn't stride. And when the pitch came, he just tried to make contact, tried to make contact. You know where he got that from? Joey Votto. Because Joe, he, they were playing the Reds, and he saw Joey Votto do that. Because that's what Joey Votto's done for years. All right. Because once he got two strikes on him, he was going to make contact. He was going to make contact. Oh, you know who else did that? Oh, well, let's see. The guy you liked the, the, from Detroit. Uh, Lou Whitaker? Well, I mean, sweet Lou. No, I'm, no, I'm, I'm, no, I'm talking to big boy. Um, the first baseman. Uh, Prince Fielder? No, no. He just he just retired. Um Oh, uh, Miguel Cabrera. Miguel Cabrera did the same thing. Yeah, if you know. watch Miguel Cabrera, he didn't swing all out on every pitch. Right. When he got two strikes, he tried to make contact. And they go opposite field. They yeah. just play pepper. That's all they're doing. Yeah. And see ball, hit ball. Don't worry about where it's going. That's what we were always taught. See ball, hit ball, and don't worry about where it's going. The other thing is, too, that we, we were talking about people learning how to bunt again, that starting to bunt. When I was on a, in the jam, JV in high school, the coach in batting practice had each one of us bunt during batting practice. And, sh, and if we didn't bunt properly, he showed us how to bunt because he wanted everybody on the team to know how to bunt. And back in those days when I watched baseball, everybody knew how to handle a bat. I mean, remember – it had, wasn't that long ago pitchers had to hit. They didn't have a DH. The pitchers hit. So the pitchers had to learn how to bunt because that was their main job if there was somebody on base was to sacrifice and move the runner along. So bunt, it's not like bunting is, is really that difficult. You just have to learn, how, like anything else, you have to learn how to do it properly. So there's different ways around this, but if you're going to lower the mound again, I mean, I don't – just try to hit the ball instead of trying to jack it out of the park. Right. Yeah, and we've that, talked about that for two years now. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's – They that, have to figure out how to make more contact. Yeah, that's – that's well, it's – I don't know why Colin Coward's worried about the batting average because nobody else is. On MLB, they say all the time it's not important. It's the on-base percentage, you know. Right. It's how many home runs you hit and how many RBIs you have. 
that's what's the important thing. The batting average means nothing. So, you know, we had that discussion a thousand times, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, but you still want to have, you know, two, 225 is a little low. You want to be above 250, 260 at least. Well, you would hope. But yeah. I mean, it's like I looked at uh, I looked at the Nationals lineup uh, before Woods came up, and um, I was looking at the lineup one day, and I was just checking the batting averages, and out of the nine starters that day, nine, one was hitting two fifty seven, and everybody else was hitting below him. Yeah. Well, I looked at the Toronto Blue Jays lineup one day. When they flashed it up on the screen, I was getting ready to watch Toronto play somebody. They had two people in that lineup hitting 190 something. Well, I'm 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 looking at Pittsburgh right now. So Brian Reynolds, who can hit, he's batting 283 and by far is the top. The next guy's 268. Then after that, it looks like 244. So there you have it. I mean, Lori. Yeah, there are some guys Lord. that are actually hitting. That Iglesias guy's hitting over 300. V Vado, Vitos, uh, he's batting like 290. Uh, Alvarez is batting 290. I, I, you know, I'll take that. Even Lindor's now back up to 250, 258. Yeah. Something like that. Well, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it, I don't think lowering the mile is going to help. That's not going to stop people from swinging from their heels because that's, that's what they're going to do. And, um, I will say this. What, Michael Taylor just was at bat for the Pirates. What did he do? Guess what he did? He bunted. No, guess what he always does? He strikes <laughs> out. <laughs> he struck out. <laughs> no matter what team he's on. <laughs> yeah, he's a hell of an outfield. <laughs> but, oh, he can yeah. play center field. He can play center field as good as anybody in the game right now. That's right. But, uh, but he can't hit. That's why the Nationals just – they gave up on him, and they finally gave up on Robles for the same reason because Robles can't. They never could, yeah. never could they hit. Too many, too many guys in the system that can can play the field and probably hit better. So, well, uh, the other the other thing I'd like to bring up is uh, about the Phillies. Uh, the Philadelphia Phillies uh, starting pitching, their starting pitchers, um, by far have the best earned run average in baseball. I mean, it's right. not even close. Right. Uh, yeah, it's uh, they have the top. Uh, they have the top in the starting pitching, and I'm not sure about complete all of their pitchers, including the bullpen. I think they're second. I'm I'm not sure, but uh, they their starting pitching is outstanding. They're starting to get their people back now. They're they're going to be very hard to uh, handle in the National League. One one other thing that I noticed this especially in the back half of this week, uh, teams releasing players, maybe not major leaguers in our minor league staff. Uh, I know the, you know, they got the draft coming up here in a couple of weeks, but it also looks like they're, some teams are making space to make moves. Um, so I think that's something to watch as well here in the next week or so. The draft is All Star Week. That's part of the All Star Week now. Yeah, um, because they I think that's thinking. pretty cool. So, yeah, and they, they uh, it improved their ratings. Right, and I mean, um, so I you know that's 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 pretty cool. So they like I know the Mets released two players this week. I saw. Somebody else get released. Some pretty good, you know, like the Mets released Trace Thompson. If he played with the Dodgers, he played the WBC with Britain. He had a really good WBC with Britain, and the the Mets picked him up in waivers and signed him to a minor league contract. Uh, he was having a good spring training, but he hasn't done anything with uh, uh, Syracuse. So. They released him, but I I was started looking because I just mean it just, and I started looking at how many teams were putting players on waivers here, and I, I don't know if it's to make open spots for the draft or, or well, what. I wouldn't. Know. I wouldn't I, why would they have an open spot for the draft? I, I have no idea. The draft, most, they go to the they go to Florida and Abel. Well, they play high rookie ball with or rookie ball, which is the exactly. second. Exactly. So why would you have to have a place on the 
Well, in case like so, if you draft a say you draft a guy that's twenty two years old that's playing in college baseball, you might not want to send him to rookie ball. You might want to start him out at double A because that would just be a waste of time putting him in A ball or rookie ball. Um, so and all, but it's also if you're if you're going to make a trade to make your major league team better. You got to have a place for the guys that they're, that they're taking their place to go to as well, right? So if you trade somebody, you got to make room, and I, and and that kind of shows me that the Mets might be sellers, trading a big player to get three or four players. You know what I'm saying? Not all of them can be on the big league roster, so that's why it moves in, in in the draft coming up and. And these guys now don't have endless bank accounts. You know, they they just, if they got dead money sitting in the miners, they kind of got to do something about it. So, well, one thing you were, we were talking about that wood for the Nationals. He's another one. He's another one that they got from the Padres in the Soto deal. Yeah. Yeah. That that trade is just coming. They got him, they got Abrams, and they got Gore. Yeah, and how long do they keep Abrams at shortstop? He has made so many errors. And then he yeah, he's, got, he's made eight errors this year. Yeah. At shortstop. Yeah. He made one against the Mets that would have got him out. And then it was two runs out. Yeah, they would have had a double play. It went right through his legs. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's I, I, I they're gonna have to do something about him. I, I don't know if he's gonna be a shortstop for in the majors. He can hit. You gotta have him in the lineup, but he might be an outfield. Yeah, they might have to move him to the outfield. Right. I mean, he wouldn't be the first. I mean, Salina, there's been shortstops that's moved to the outfield forever. I mean, that's not, you know, the, the Padres is full of shortstops. That's all they have, and they're all over the place. They play everywhere. So, you know, it's not, it's not a bad thing. You just gotta have a little bit better sure hands at, at short. Well, sometimes to me, nonchalance the ball. Yeah. He, he kind of comes up on a, See, you know, like he, he knows he's already caught it. Yeah. And he hasn't caught it. Right. It looked like to me he was rushing to play for whatever reason. It was a hard hit ball. He just came up on it. I don't know if he's a little tentative. I don't know. Maybe he's got hit. I, I don't know. But uh, I wanted to ask you, because I remember that play now. And, uh, it was something else I was going to ask you if, what your thoughts were on, but I can't can't think of it right now. Well, we were coming over, back to me. Well, okay. Huh? The standings. We always I always run over the standings. Oh, I want to throw one more out thing out there before, and this isn't it, but just to let everybody know, um, I, I was looking at the flag behind you. So UVA has picked up four pitchers in the transfer portal so far this year, going in for next year. Wow! They picked up. They pick up the uh, uh, the team that the won the Division Three National Championship this year. They picked up their number one left hander, so he he's going to UVA. So, and UVA ended up twenty first in the country. How does that happen when you're eighth? When you make the top eight? Don't ask me. <laughs> you go to you go to the World Series and you're in the top eight and you wind up twenty first in the country. That makes no I, sense. I don't know how the math work on that one. That was, it that doesn't was make dumb. any sense, but who knows? No. I mean, right, the, go, only go ahead. Count, the only one that counts is number one. I mean, right. Really Tennessee, counts. Tennessee won it by, they could have probably, it could probably be, you know, maybe Colorado or. It's, and Texas A&M beat the devil out of them in the first like, three game playoff. Right. Yeah. And so, then Tennessee uh, came back and won the next two games because they had better pitching. Yeah. Tennessee was deep. Yep. Yeah. I'm well, glad I didn't watch it because I'm not going to listen to Rocky Top being played. That was, <laughs> Jesus Christ. And it, well, and the other thing, let's say this too: that was Tennessee's first uh, national championship in baseball. Yeah, yeah, their first one. In fact, Which either one of them. Surprising. Yeah. That would have been the first one for Texas A&M too. So, yeah, that's kind of surprising too. They've it just as long as I remember, they've you know well, Texas A&M's been around the playoffs. Right, you know. but they've right. And they've always been very competitive, and so has Tennessee. Right. But then you got to figure there's the Floridas of the world, and 
the Florida states of the world, North Carolina. Well, I, I saw like this year, Richita Shockers made it back into regionals at least. And they used so to be a powerhouse. That were the powerhouse back in the eighties, um, and early nineties. Them and uh, Pepperdine and yeah, uh, Pepperdine, yeah. University of Maine. <laughs> University <laughs> of Maine, but they, but all the kids, they had a satellite school. Little tidbit in Florida. So that's where the kids were playing. The kids that played for University of Maine was going to school in Florida. So that's how that happened. <laughs> Go ahead with your stand is there. Well, it's yeah, you know, it's basically the same thing every week. The Orioles are up by two on the Yankees. Uh Boston is in third place and they're doing, you know, they got smoked yesterday by the Yankees, but they're they're doing I know their defense is bad, and some of that can be put on the coaches and the manager. But for that team to be where they are, that man, the manager of the Boston Red Sox has got to be at least looked at for manager of the year. He's got to be in the running because yeah. he's done an excellent job with that team. Yeah. Uh, with I what they've I'm, lost. At least for the first half of the season. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Cleveland is up by six on uh, Minnesota, and Minnesota is starting to really play well now. Uh, the Mariners – are up by two over the high flying Astros. The Astros are rolling. Um, Altuve's day to day right now. Yeah, but anyway, he's they're 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 up by two on the Astros. In the National League, the Phillies are up by nine on Atlanta. I think Atlanta lost fifteen more players. I'm not sure, but uh, they're up by nine on Atlanta. I think uh, they're called the Gwyneth Braves now. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Milwaukee's. Milwaukee's up on by five on the Cardinals, and L.A. is up by seven and a half on the Padres. Um, and Milwaukee and L.A. aren't playing very well, but their division, nobody in their divisions are playing that well. So uh, I, I, all the divisions seem pretty. But you start looking at the wild card race in both leagues. Yeah. That's interesting. Well, Those in the wild card, in, in, the, in the American League, you have, you have the Yankees, Minnesota, and Boston. Boston's the third team now. Yeah. Kansas City's a game and a half behind Boston, and Houston's two and a half behind right. Boston. Um, Atlanta and the Padres and St. Louis are the three teams in the in the National League, and the Mets and the Diamondbacks are both two and a half games back. See, not, it, for the Braves to be talking about being in the wild card again, you want that manager is incredible for the Braves. Yeah, I mean, they lose their – they lose a Cy Young, possible Cy Young winner. They lose last year's most valuable player. They've had their second baseman hurt. Their third baseman was hurt. They've had one of their outfielders hurt. They're, they lost their center fielder, who's an all-star. He just came back. Um, I, you know, he's got a 40-year-old pitching and a 39-year-old pitching. He's got a retread from the Boston Red Sox pitching. So, yeah, Snit he's, Snitker's done a – Fantastic job in Atlanta. He really has. Yeah. Um, I'm <laughs> this can't this uh wow. The Cubs went out and got one of the top managers, maybe the top manager in baseball from Milwaukee. And the Cubs now are not doing very well. And some of the people in Chicago want him fired. And <laughs> they just hired the guy. He just hired. Yeah, cancel. <laughs> I, I really like him. Yeah. Be well, you gotta win. You well, have to win. The fans will not accept anything but winning. Matches. And I mean, that's a that city, you know. But they're not a very they're not built very well. That team's not that's not a well built team right now. They got some parts, but not well built. No, no, and and just I went back to the land. I said, oh, I forgot to look up and see how many teams have losing records. I had so I went back and it's sixteen. So it's. Back to sixteen. Jesus. Back to sixteen. So it's uh, but it's you know, it is what it is. Nobody's at five hundred. It's just sixteen teams with losing records. Oh, that uh, the All Star Game is on the sixteenth, uh, um, and I believe the the I was talking about that red carpet thing. I think that's that afternoon. I think it's that afternoon or evening. They're going to do it before the All Star Game. But um, anyway, and the Futures Game is on the thirteenth, I believe. Yeah, that's usually on Sunday. That's usually on the Sunday because an All Star game is usually on a. Oh, I've got the calendar right in front of me. The thirteenth, yeah. the thirteenth on Saturday, Saturday, and the sixteenth is on Tuesday. Yeah. 
Then 15th is Home Run Derby. And the 17th will be the ESPYs because that's nobody plays then. I don't know if anybody plays Thursday, those two days. Yeah. I don't I can't remember how when they come back. And if I may say, I'm going to say one thing about the WNBA. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I watched uh, Ruth and I, your, your stepmother and I sat there and watched some of the uh, WNBA game between uh, Indiana and the New York team, which is New York's only lost three games this year, and they were playing in Indiana. They'd lost nine straight games to the New York team, and they were playing in Indiana. The place was sold out. I saw this morning where it was uh, the highest ranked, the highest rated, because it was on CBS. It wasn't on, mm-hmm. it was on CBS. It was like, and it hit the the overnight ratings. It was probably going to be the highest rated WNBA game ever, <laughs> playoff or regular season. And uh, Caitlin Clark got a triple double in that game. Yep, and the crowd went nuts as soon as she got the rebound. Yeah, she's the uh, she, she's the first rookie uh, to get uh, a triple double in the, in the WNBA. And, mm-hmm. and I know I know a lot of people have uh, have criticized her and stuff like that, but I've got to give the young lady credit because she's a class act. Whenever she does an interview or something, she doesn't complain about anything. She doesn't talk about how she got clobbered a few times and hit upside the head. And, Never says anything about it. She said, we're just playing basketball. I'm, I'm sorry. Them, how many? So when you look in the crowd, how many kids are wearing 22 jerseys? They don't matter what stadium they're in. Yeah. And fans and, are happy and, to buy it for them. And, you, and look at these WNBA games. You're going to see a ton of kids in the crowd. That's right. There's a lot of girls. I brought girls. that up a few weeks ago. I, it's. It seems like that's the most fam- – I mean, baseball to me is the most family-oriented. But it looks like the WNBA is right there with it. And Because those little girls are seeing her play, and they're I, now, I, they see I'm, her play, and they see the other girls play, and they know how good the other girls are now. Right. I'm really hoping that there is a Caitlin Clark softball player out there somewhere. It's, you know, Finch and some others pitching, but they need an offensive player, I think. You know, to really boost it up. Well, they, um, they, I was watching a little bit of the golf yesterday. Uh, the, the uh, um, um, they're playing in the Quad Cities in, in Illinois and uh, John Deere Classic. And mm-hmm. last year in the Pro Am, Caitlin is that Clark, Illinois, or is that, huh? Is that Illinois? Or Iowa? Quad it's City. Illinois, it's right on the border with Iowa. Oh, okay. I don't. They said the golf, the golf, the the uh, the golf course is in I in, in uh, Illinois, right on the border. And uh, anyway, they were playing. They said last year Caitlin Clark played in the pro am with Zach Johnson, who's about forty five years old. He's been around for a long time, won the British Open and things like that. And he said that she could have been a professional golfer. Well, how, in Iowa, everybody plays golf in Iowa. And they showed her, and they showed her swing. And I mean, she she's just a natural. She's a natural. Well, she played, I, I'm telling you, in Iowa, a lot of people play golf. It's and they're good. It's like I said in Iowa, when it, the weather breaks, everybody's outside doing something because they don't. Yeah, want because to be the weather, you know, the way the, the weather only stays broken about three months. Yeah, so. So as November comes around, and I just I just wanted to mention that because she, yeah, that's, she I has mean, put, um, she has put that league on the map, and right. everything that those girls, those young ladies are getting now that they probably deserved before, they owe it to her because without her, they Marshall, wouldn't be on yeah, the map. Mark, Mark. Yeah, um, you know, some of it was gradually coming, but she's really rushed it along, and uh, and, and the thing is, is when those places are sold out, they're seeing you play too. They're, they might be there to see her, but they're going to. Well, see, that's what they're talking about. These kids are seeing these other women play and see how good they are. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I I, I don't know if I told you, but it, this is. So last year, the best player is the girl from Vegas. Her name's what, Asia, Asia. I, yeah, she yeah. Played, went to the University of South Carolina. Yeah, she's awesome. And I mean, I should know her name because she's very, very good. Uh, and last year, she only had like 32,000 votes. And this year, 
she has over 267,000 votes for the All-Star team. Yeah, Asia uh, was it? So right? that shows you how many more people are watching the game and paying attention. And she's still the number one vote getter over Caitlin Clark. She's so it's not like everybody just said, oh, they're voting for Caitlin. She's still the number one vote getter. She's everybody recognizes she's the best. And uh, you know, that that's the big part. And some of the girls that are playing in Team USA can't be an all-star game. So that's kind of skewed a little bit of the but she I thought she was playing for USA too. But I mean, just think if if Caitlin would have been on Team USA, the just the media that would the well, that's media, the, that's now they're going to get negative media when they go go over there. That's uh, one of the criticisms a lot of the people on television have had about um, her Caitlin Clark not being not because she's good enough to be on it, not as she's not right. as good as, but as as. Uh, as a media thing, it would have been out. I mean, people would have been watching. Now, when the Olympics are played and the Ameri the women's basketball team plays, I might watch it. I might. But if the Orioles and the Nationals are on at the same time, I'm probably going to watch baseball. But I mean, if Caitlin Clark, if Caitlin was, Clark was playing on that team, I'd be watching that instead of the baseball. So, uh, and also the whole world would be watching. Exactly. The whole world. And that and that's the thing. And that's the part they're missing. You know, I she might not be good enough to be one of the top twelve. I don't know. I don't watch enough women's basketball. I can't no, she that. I don't I think some of the those older women in the NBA are, are just outstanding. And, and right. no, she's not in their bracket yet, not even right. close. Right. And I mean, so but logic will tell you. It's a purpose because somebody said, "Oh, Michael Jordan didn't make it his first year," but you know what? I know the rest of the Dream Team players, and I can't name anybody on the WNBA team. So that's the difference. Michael Jordan didn't have to be on that team for everybody to know about American basketball. Exactly. <laughs> and everybody else was, you know, was was a huge name at that time. Uh, that's the difference, and. Uh, so it's, it's a little missed on that, you know, and, and, uh, you know, I was, I, we watch all sports. We pay attention to it. So sorry. We went on a tangent today. Oh, sure. I watch all sports. I, yeah. And, I mean, uh, I don't watch much WNBA. I'll be honest, I, but I watch the highlights, you know, I, I'm, I'm curious. I'm starting to learn some of the names. I watched some of the women's, uh, college basketball last year. I, I always watch the championship, well, last few years because of Don Staley being a UVA alumni, uh, coach for South Carolina. So, you know, it's a little bit more interesting. It's still a team sport, too. It hasn't gone to a me, me, me sport. So, yeah. Uh, and that that's still fun to watch. Um, anything else to add before we close out today? No, I mean, because uh, after the All Star game, then they'll be heading for the trade deadline. So yeah, and I, I just want to point out to uh, my man Sadler fan who uh, has been watching the last few weeks. He just I wanted to point this out to you, Dad. He did make a remark last week that it was funny. He uh, put in quotes, "I'm tired today," and then you proceeded to talk forty minutes <laughs> on baseball nonstop. So <laughs> he thought that was great, and I and I said that's my dad. He, if you give him a spotlight for his opinion, he can be on his last leg. He's gonna give it. So uh, I get it honestly. <laughs> and uh, yeah, when I, I'm ready to pass away, and I'm laying on you know, and I'm laying on the gurney, and I'm ready to pass away, I'm gonna go one more thing <laughs> before I go. <laughs> so uh, and I just wanna you know uh, I have another handful of new subscribers this week. If you happen to turn this on and got this far, yes, we don't talk cards on here. It's just baseball most of the time, but we do talk about other sports as well. So uh, I hope you enjoy. Give us a like or dislike. Tell us, uh, ask questions or let us know what you're into or if you're going to watch the WNBA or the Women's Olympics. I don't really watch the Olympics, but, uh, you know, Anyway, until next time, see ya.